Here's another question someone sent. They wanted to know how you would nail plywood subflooring to the floor joists. And uh, there's basically two of the most popular methods. And the first method would be square edge plywood. These are four by eight sheets of plywood. And again, you can use larger sheets of plywood. And um, it's usually going to be three quarters of an inch thick. And this method here with a square edge will use blocks. So these will be two by four blocks most of the time. And you can see the plywood. Now the nails around the perimeter are going to be six inches on center spacing. And usually the nail at the edge, and this is kind of something I've never heard anybody talk about. If anyone has, has information about this, feel free to post it in the comment area so I could even learn something. I've never heard anybody say just exactly how far away the nail should be from the edge of the plywood. I know with some other products, windows, you got to keep it a certain distance away. But I'm guessing that you would keep this nail about three eighths to a half inch away from each side. And of course, on the edge here, where you're nailing into the joist, you might need to um, angle it to where it's going to go into the joist. And these nails could actually be a little bit farther away because you're going to be able to nail into an inch and three quarter um, piece of wood. That's if you have the two by four blocks flat. You could always run them on edge to where you would, they would be just like the joist, but that might not be recommended. Now in the field here, it's 12 inches on center. So you could start from here and go in 12 inches. I don't think you would need a nail here or here, but it's usually going to be six inches around the perimeter or the edges. And this, of course, is on square edge with blocks and 12 inches in the field. And I'm just going to go ahead and go through this a little faster. Usually the nails will go through. You're going to be using eight D or eight penny nails most of the time. Um, but uh, depending on the thickness of plywood, if you use inch and an eighth plywood, you might need to use 16 D nails. And um, some plywood will actually need to be nailed with 10D nails. So you would need to check with your um, engineer for that information. If you're doing this on your own, um, you know, then you would be without an engineer, 8D, 10D, or 16D nails, depending upon the project. I can't really provide you with the exact nailing for that. But most of the time, this six around the perimeter and 12 in the field is going to be your most common. And this will give you an idea of what it would look like where the nails without the plywood. This is something you can't do on the job. and uh, But I can. I can do it on my drawing here. So again, square edge plywood, six inches around the perimeter, 12 inches in the field. Now, if we have tongue and groove plywood, we won't be going around the perimeter of the length here. The tongue and groove will actually provide us the support that we would need in between the joists, so we wouldn't need the blocks. So you would have six inches on center around the edges, and then this, of course, would be one nail into every joist. There's our sheet of tongue and groove. This is the tongue. This is the groove. Just slide it in there. And usually going to have a little gap um, here. And this allows some of the some of the lumber will come with some type of a spacing. Um, you're not going to be able to get it any tighter. And this, of course, allows for the lumber to expand and contract as it gets moist. But um, I have heard lately that if you just have regular plywood, T, you know, T111, you're supposed to leave a gap here. And we've never done that. Um, but it would make sense to follow the instructions. Now I went ahead and moved the plywood. I didn't want you to think that you could just line the plywood up. Plywood does need to be staggered. And I do have another video on floor sheathing, but I don't think I have one on the floor nailing. Now in this one here, I want you to take a look at the nailing here. I also wanted to give you an idea what it would look like at the edge here. 
Let me see if I'm going on the right path here. Okay, I am. Here on the edge, we would need six inches on center nailing. Now it can be less than six inches on center, but I wouldn't have it go less than four inches on center. This could actually split the joist and uh, could be a problem for the structural. You know, I know a lot of people think, hey, if I put it four inches on center, it'll be stronger. And it might be, but a lot of lumber with um, four inch on center or less, three and two inches on center, it splits the wood and might require a larger um, joist. Like instead of a two by 10, you would need a three by 10 or a four by 10. So keep that in mind. Now here's something I wanna point out is that uh, this is how I would nail the floor in the field nailing here. So in the joist, I put one on each end and four in the middle. And this puts it between nine and 10 inches uh, on center. Now you can go with the three nails. Three nails will provide you with a 12 inch on center spacing. But if you were to nail one at 13 inches and the next one at 10 inches and the next one at 10 inches, then there could be a problem with the one that's 13 inches. If you put four in the center, then you're probably gonna be okay. So I just wanted to throw that out there as my last tip in the video. So I hope this answers your question and makes sense. And I uh, will put a couple more links in the video to, um, I am going to make another one in the future on the nail, nails that are used for this. Um, common nails, sinkers, ring shanks, and uh, spiral shaft or drive screws as we used to call them. But I will put a link in this video right here when it is, I do have that video completed.